Hello and welcome to your recipe for financial success with me, Emma, and my colleagues, Becky and Julie. In each episode, we'll be bringing you a list of ingredients to help you cook up a storm and master methods to finesse your finances. We'll be helping you expand your repertoire and hopefully teach you a few new skills along the way. So, clear the counters and get your mixing bowls ready for today's recipe. Let's get started. You know what, Emma? You know what I really enjoy about these evenings? What's that? It's light when I go home. It's amazing, isn't it? And light when you wake up. I know, it's fantastic. The only thing about winter, I don't mind winter, don't get me wrong, but it's like getting up in the dark, going home in the dark. It just gets on your nerves a little bit after a while, and it's so nice to be like, the, the, everything's in flower, it's really lovely. I wake up and the sun is shining, well, not every day, and I go to, I come home from work and it's still light in the evenings. What about you, Becky? Yeah, I love it. It's much nicer than uh, than winter. So uh, I'm actually inspired to almost get up and go for a run in the morning. Oh, don't get too far ahead. Emma. I said almost. Don't <laughs> worry. I was going to say, don't get carried away. And that's the other thing that I really like when I can do when I can do like morning training as well. I like to do my early morning, my training first thing in the morning. I don't like afternoon or midday. Get up in the morning, get it done, get on with the day, and I always feel really energized as well afterwards feel good morning yeah i just love waking up to a nice bright sunny morning it makes you feel nice and happy <laughs> yes it does start the day as you mean to go on yeah so anyway in this week's episode we're looking at ways to encourage our little apprentice bakers to save some money oh i like <laughs> and we even have a little guest sat with us today we have Eddie's here. Yes, he is. Eddie Teddy is our special guest, and you'll hear some more about him a little bit later on as well. So this episode, I actually really enjoyed doing some research on. It's not something that we um, often talk about much in kind of our business, but it is a really important topic, and I've really enjoyed delving into this one a little bit more. And it was, a, again, a, t- a topic that someone's asked us for to find out about um, ways to encourage our children to save and the apps that they can use as well. So we've got lots of information here that um, I've been f- finding out. So you might learn something tr- too from this one, girls. Oh, looking forward to it, Emma. So what, what can you tell us about young savers? So did you know that research has shown that we form uh, most of our basic money habits by the age of seven? That doesn't actually surprise me. A lot of the work I've been doing on money mindset recently, and we really do delve back to what you remember from your childhood. So actually, that's really part of um, your primary socialization. I wonder who did a sociology at A-level. So educating um, our children about money is really, really important to be able to set them up for the future. Um, And it can start off with really simple things so I know my nephew he has a little piggy bank and he loves just dropping the coins in and I know that sounds like a really ridiculous thing but it's just kind of instilling that we, we put the money inside it we're not always taking it out we're, we're dropping those coins in and um it's helped him to obviously be able to um his motor skills being able to do that so it's kind of help, helping more than one thing at the same time so it's only really basic things that we can start off when with when children are really really young um but as they get older it's just a, a good way to kind of instill that into them i bet he likes the sound of when the, of the coins inside of the new coin hits the coins inside as well definitely don't worry i only give him the pennies though yeah. i'm not giving him the, the bigger <laughs> coins yet not that nice yeah my <laughs> bigger <laughs> child he likes to put his money in his in jar as well i could imagine <laughs> But I must admit, he now has a habit of if he sees a coin, it's like, mine. Yeah, <laughs> goes in the yeah, piggy it bank. goes in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> but a good, good habit to have. Absolutely. As long as it's not your money. This is very true. But if you find a penny on the floor, he'll have it. <laughs> it's his. Something that I remember doing as a child um, was having a piece of paper and um, every time I got some pocket money, like adding it up, so I had like a run in the total, so I could work towards a target amount of how much I wanted to be able to save up to. So I remember having a pair of um, like trainers where the wheels popped out and turned into like little roller skates. That was something ah. I saved up for. <laughs> Loved <Excellent>. those. <laughs> so do you remember anything like as a child that you used to do to, with money that's always stuck with you? No, I can't remember anything like, what you didn't like that no i remember always get searching through the argos catalog 
See what I want. Christmas and birthdays, Christmas circling and the birthdays ones. And yeah. yeah, and then writing like the catalogue number down. <laughs> but I can't remember actually with my own like pocket money. How anything... you saved or anything you did. No, with it. anything like that. Oh, you say that. We used to have the great universal catalogue and I used to cut out pictures of things that I wanted. But until you've just said that, I'd never really thought that I was probably creating my first vision board. Definitely. So doing something without even realising it there, Julie, of creating your future to do with saving habits and all sorts of things. Do you make vision boards for things now? I do. I do like to do a good vision board. I've got an app I use at the moment, but I do quite like the whole kind of actually finding the pictures and cutting them out and doing things and like that. And visualising what yeah, you're looking for. Yeah, definitely, to yes, I do do that. There we go. Found that out all about yourself that you didn't even know, look. I know, just to delve deep, you never know what might be there. But definitely. So some parents, I think, it's is safe to say that they would choose to keep things very secretive from their children, so they wouldn't share um, things to do with money. Now, I understand um, certain big major things that you might keep quiet from a child because it's not necessarily an emotion they can deal with, but... Um, smaller things and savings and um, smaller amounts I think personally that is a really good good thing to share with children and to encourage them and get them involved so things like going to the bank um, if you go to the bank together and put 20 pounds into a savings account for them which you've got control of and they can't access I think it's a good idea to, for them to go with you and put some money into their own account so some money that they have got access to that they can use so I remember doing this when I was little and it actually then became a bit of a competition of rather than me wanting to take my money out and spend it, I was just looking to put more in. It was a competition. Can I get as much as mum's got in her account for me? And so it kind of drove me to save more. So I think that's something that a lot more people could do for their children, kind of having them involved in that that kind of saving process rather than just doing it for them, keeping it secret and then when they're 18 or 21, whatever age it may be, giving them that pot of money that they never knew anything about. Mm, keeping them involved and also helps to keep the children interested as well. Definitely. I know when I was younger, I mean, you probably guys don't remember building society books. Yes, yes. I do actually. <laughs> so I, when I was little, we had I had an account at, um, nationwide and I used to go and put my pocket money in. Um, I think I'd save so much and then I would... So I wasn't going in with 10p every week, but certainly I'd get so much and I'd go in and save the money. But yes, and I had like different uh, books of different amounts in for different things. So yeah, definitely. You saying that made me think of something else that we did when I was little. When I was at school, we actually all opened a bank account through the school and they used to walk us down to the post office where you could actually pay into the, the account. No so every week we'd go down and then the post office closed down and uh, you couldn't do it anymore. So it didn't last very long. <laughs> that sounds like such a good idea, though. Yeah, and, it, and it's nice that even back then, way back when, that the school was doing something to yeah. educate because I don't think finance is brought into education enough at the moment. No, I definitely agree with that. That's really cool. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. Obviously, we didn't do anything like that when I was at school. No, neither did we. <laughs> Special treatment. <laughs> so... Do you remember when you were children how much pocket money you used to get? I can't remember when I was really, sort of really little, but I do remember as I was sort of a bit older, um, I used to get £5 a week. Very good. So. You, you were well looked after yeah, as a child Yeah, well then, looked Becky. after, yeah. Oh, blimey, inflation. <laughs> so obviously I'm a little bit older. So um, I used to get, um, when I was five, I got 50p. When I was six, I got 60p. When I was seven, I think we can all guess what I got. Not 70p. Absolutely. And it used to then work up. And um, and then when I was older, um, I had I was a um, reserve paper girl, which I have to say was the best job in the world. Um, but my mum used to give me um, my family allowance money, which was roughly £40 a month. And then I had to buy all my own clothes and everything myself. So to really teach me how to manage my own finances. I see. That's, that was a good way of doing it as well. Something that I hadn't necessarily thought of doing. So another tip there thrown in by Julie about how to get sl slightly older children to take responsibility of their money. So do you know what the going rate for pocket money is at the moment? I wouldn't have a clue where to start. I really wouldn't. Well, I was a little bit shocked by this. More than 50p if you're five, I'm guessing. Yep. 
<laughs> Definitely more than 50p if you're five. I haven't got oh. it from the age of five. I've got it from the age of six. Oh, how things change. So the UK average weekly allowance for a six-year-old is £2.81 a week on average. What was a six-year-old spending £2.81 on? Hopefully they're saving most of it, Becky. Well, yeah, I should think so. <laughs> Freddo's aren't 10p anymore, Becky. No. <laughs> you can't get two sweets for a penny anymore. Inflation's affected yeah, the sweets too, yeah. so... That's, what's that now? Three Freddo's and that's gone? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> so, a 10-year-old, the average is £3.77 a week. A 15-year-old... Is seven pounds thirty-two a week, and this one shocks me a little bit. An eighteen-year-old. I didn't realise eighteen-year-olds got pocket money. Yeah, no, I would question that one a little bit. <laughs> Apparently, they get on average ten pounds twenty-six a week. Hmm. So, what do you get when you get to forty-four? Do I need to make a call? Hmm. You might have to ask your parents what what what's on what offer. What the going rate is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what can they? do with this money what types of accounts are there out there for children and where can they put it i'm assuming you've done some research into this emma of course i have <laughs> as, as we look blankly at you like um <laughs> so there's probably what you'd expect to be quite the obvious out there um deposit based bank accounts where um they can be held in a parent's name with the child named on it um but once they get to a certain age um the child can have it in their own name and I had a little look. Surprisingly, you can get um, deposit accounts with interest rates up to 3%. Wow. I'm going to be writing on my birth certificate. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I know. That's, that's all right, isn't it? Blimey. Yeah. Um, bearing in mind, though, it is a variable rate. So that 3% could change. So it's not fixed or anything. Uh, but it's better than 0.1. Definitely. So yeah. Blimey. worthwhile saving for your children. Um, there's also junior ISAs out there, so if anybody remembers back from our ISA episode, um, you can have a junior ISA up until the age of 16, um, but you can't access the money until you're 18, um, and they obviously are in cash or stocks and shares. I had a little look at the rates for cash ISAs, and the highest rate I could find for a cash ISA was 2.95%, so again... Not bad. Decent rate Not of bad, interest. Yeah. Um, and they could even have premium bonds. So I've actually done this for my nephew. Every birthday and Christmas, um, I put, I think, £25 into premium bonds. It doesn't sound like a huge amount, but by the time he's 18, I'm sure there'll be a tidy little sum and he could win a million pounds. You never know. I've still got my um, premium bonds from when, the year I was born. Wow. Yeah. But they haven't got the certificate still. I found them the other year. And I think when I was christened as well, I had more. But do you ever win on them, Julie? Not recently. I I did win once, many years ago, £25, but nothing recently. That's fair enough. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> what? Have you only won once since you were born? <laughs> well, I might have won when I was little and mum didn't tell me. Oh, actually, no, you, I tell a lie. I have won since then. But I just reinvest, so oh, it's not okay. quite as bad. Yeah. But it's yeah. not quite the same as not, getting the physical cash yeah, the, in your but, hand. But yeah. still nothing won for about 10 years. But yeah, I, I did reinvest. Yeah. So this is where it gets really interesting, because this is where I did the research about things that I knew nothing about. Mm. Um, so there's loads of different pocket money apps. Um, so you can download these to encourage your children to save. Um, and some of them even give them capability to actually use it for spending. So it's all like an account where they can have a card oh. to access the money as well. I will just add here, some of the apps that you can download, they're free. But to unlock all of the features and everything, there is, um, as they say, in-app purchases. Um, so there is a cost involved. So make sure you've got your parental settings on your tablet or whatever you're downloading them on for your children to make sure they don't pay for anything that you're not expecting <laughs> they spend their pocket money on the app <laughs> yeah pretty much um but just just bear that in mind but it may be well worthwhile so the first one i found is one called go henry go henry sounds like the hoover <laughs> i've definitely heard of this one before i'm up definitely at least someone knows what we're talking about then yeah no, definitely. so go henry um 
has a prepaid card with parental control so they can control how much you can spend in one go. Um, obviously it sets a limit on there so you can never go overdrawn. You can only physically spend what's in there. Um, and it's for children between 8 and 18 <laughs> years old. Nice little bonus on this one. You can have a two month free trial and then it's two ninety nine per month per child. Um, but you can set up a regular amount of money, um, pocket money, to be sent to your child. Or you can send them extra one-off amounts to the account. Um, so if they've done some chores around the house or done something that deserves a reward, oh. whatever that may be, you can send them some extra money. That's so clever. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I guess we are slowly evolving to a cashless society. Mm. Um, so this is kind of the the modern way of getting your five pound note every week becky or yeah your 70 people it's... in change julie is kind of the modern way of doing it so like i say you can spe set spending limits and you can even limit where the card can be used so you might only allow them to use it in a toy shop or so it's going to restrict them from spending in places that you don't want them to be spending like the arcade and places like that which yeah definitely do, do children still go to the arcade i don't know Bowling, maybe, or yeah. the machines? I don't know. Uh, yes, so like bowling, when they've got the machine. Yes, when I said that was what I meant by arcade. <laughs> ah, I see. The 2P machines is what <laughs> you meant. <laughs> I did mean the 2P machines, yes. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Terminology changes for these things, eh? Homes are so old. <laughs> Go down the arcade. <laughs> um, but I never went down the arcade. <laughs> You were I never cool enough for that. I grew up in a village that wasn't an arcade. <laughs> grew up in the village. I oh do. You make yourself sound like a proper Norfolk farmer. Yeah. <laughs> so in this app as well, they can also set um, savings goals. So it can encourage them to save. And it can be set so a certain percentage of their pocket money each week will automatically go towards that savings goal. So then there's only a certain proportion of their money that they can actually spend. So like Becky's favourite tip, I know this one is one of her favourites in our five top tips for budgeting, to save on the day you get paid. Yes. It's like favorite. doing the same with your pocket money on the day yeah. you get it. It's a good, good habit to get into. Yes, it is. Um, and they can have loads of goals in there as well. So it's not just they can have one goal for one particular thing they're saving up for. They can save up for lots of different things. And... They can have an option for donating to charity. So what a fantastic way to encourage um, saving and donating to charity from such a young age. That's that is so clever. I'm so impressed. It's really can you tell them a little bit overexcited about this? I am so this? impressed. I can, I can see what app your children are going to have. Yeah, too, right. That's excellent. Well, yeah. But it's not the only one, though, is it, Emma? What else did you research? Well, the next one is Rooster Money Pocket Money Transfer. I think it's shortened to rooster most of the time. Yeah, I, mean, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one is aimed at a slightly different age group, between 4 and 14. And parents can have multiple accounts. So obviously if you've got several children, um, you can have an account for each of them. But each child will get their own dashboard for their own pocket money. So they, they just get their own little account. Um, again, parents can give boosts, as they call it on rooster, um, to give extra pocket money for chores and different things that they've done. Um, and this one actually has a little fancy thing where you can upload pictures. So um, oh, That's like the Argos catalogue of yes, today. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Cutting out your pictures and creating your yes. vision board, Julie. Um, you can upload that onto the app so you can actually see what you're saving towards. Um, and in the earlier years, um, it actually uses star charts and reward systems as well to encourage saving. So um, I remember having things like that as well, where you got stickers for doing things. So it's like a, a virtual um, edition of that as well. I do like a good star chart. Mm. We should have one at work, Becky. We haven't done I a star know. chart for ages. There we go. Let's think of have something we can do. Stickers. One. Yeah, no, definitely. Oh, I know what the stickers are. I just need to think what we're going to star chart for. That's fair Washing enough. up duties. <laughs> <laughs> tea, tea duties. You made me a good cup of tea. <laughs> yes. Did I get a cake with it, a cup of tea? <laughs> Two yes. stars. Two stars, bonus. <laughs> um, this one costs between 15 and £25 pounds a year, um, but there's additional costs if you have more than one child. Um, and this one also introduces a, a payment card, so as they get older, um, they can have a card to access the money and, and use it as well. Um, but there's, honestly, I 
I could have spent hours researching and finding more apps because there's so many. If you just go on Google and, and have a little search, it will bring up loads of different um, apps that you can try and use. Is it wrong to go home and have a look even though I don't have any children? No, it's not. <laughs> You've got to be prepared, Becky. One day you might have children. Yeah, I need to know. I need to do some market research. Yes, you do. <laughs> and then I found another one. So this one doesn't actually um, physically have pocket money go into or anything. And I'm not going to lie. I am going to go home and download this one. It's aimed at four to six-year-olds, but... <laughs> of course you're going to go home and download it. <laughs> I would, like you like, to... would you like me to comment there or not? Go on, you can comment. <laughs> Four to six-year-olds? Yeah. Okay, Emma. Not for me personally. Oh, I'm oh. going to download it. Are you sure? For my nephew. And I mm. like to think he's a bit of a child genius. He's only three, so... Mm. Are, are you convinced that it's... <laughs> oh, that that it's, was quickly added on the end there. That it's for Emma's <laughs> nephew and not for herself. <laughs> not not. Well, all. I've got to test it before I give it to him to of make course. sure. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> this one is called Pigby's Fair. Aunt Emma, why are you already on level 62? <laughs> Just give him the head start, all right? <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, Emma. Yeah. Back on track. Okay, Pigby's Fair, go for it. So this is a NatWest app, and it's more of an educational game. Um, so you don't, like I say, you don't put your money in there. It doesn't have an actual account, but it is kind of guiding you into opening their children's account. Um, and a random interesting fact about this game, it was designed by the makers of Wallace and Gromit. Ah, so the characters are quite cool. I like them. Um, so basically the app has a money, money-saving hero who embarks on an, on an adventure around a fairground where they're challenged to spend, save and earn money. Can you see why I'm a little bit excited about this now? Yes. Um, <laughs> and they can also visit Pigby at the bank um, to set some savings targets. So like I say, I want to download this one just to kind of have a play with it and, and see what it is because... I think it is something that could be really good to use with children and just kind of show them because we all know how kids love technology and playing a game. If you can actually be sending a message through that game as well, yeah, why wouldn't why you? Not? Yeah, I might download it for Eddie. I think that's a plan. So speaking of Eddie, we also have a little bear with us today, a special guest, um, and I'd love to say that he can voice. Um, his savings tips and the things that he does for children. But I think, Julie, you might have to um, speak on behalf of Eddie and, and share some of Eddie's um, children's savings tips. I certainly can. So Eddie is with us. Eddie is our Director of Happiness. And um, he's basically, if you he, on our website, he has... Um, He's, he writes a regular monthly blog about his saving tips. So he's done lots of different things from opening a bank account um, through to um, saving for holidays and lots of different things like that. And he's also very much into his charitable good deeds as well. So I think this this month he was um, he was collecting up items from his bedroom for pocket money. Mm -hmm. And um, next week, next month, I do believe actually well, he will probably be actually selling some of those items from his pocket money as well. So that would be quite good. So he's also the author of two children's books. So although he doesn't say much, he does write well. And he's written um, Eddie Teddy's Big Summer of Savings and Eddie Teddy Goes on Holiday. So um, he's very excited. He wants to download Pigby's, Pigby's Fair because he thinks that he might quite enjoy it. Auntie Emma will let play with him. This Don't worry. It. So definitely. So, But if you want to follow Eddie, he's on social media. He's got his own Facebook page, which is Eddie Teddy. And he also has his own Instagram as well. But we'll share the links in the podcast notes as well. So if you want to follow Eddie, then please do. But his mission is to help make more information about money and savings more available for, for the younger generation. And that's what he likes to do. Definitely. He's... And he likes to travel the world as well. Of course he does. Yeah. Uh, and he's a little bear that's trying to do his bit to educate the children that um, schools don't, there is a gap there at the moment. Um, so he's trying to fill that gap. And he's very cute. He is very cute. Yes, definitely. So I believe that's all I have today to share with you on um, savings tips for children and apps. Um, but if I have come across anything else, do not worry. I will be back with some more exciting information. Excellent. Well, I shall look forward to next time then. <laughs> and with that, we've completed today's recipe. We hope you have enjoyed following along with us today and cooking yourself one recipe closer to a financially secure future. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, you can head over to www.recipeforfinancialsuccess.co.uk 
where you can find out more information and a full list of ingredients from today's recipe. For more hints, tips and tasters, find us on Facebook at Your Recipe for Financial Success. If you'd like to get more involved, share your own experiences and learn from a friendly community on a similar journey to you, why not join us in our new Facebook group, The Money Compass, where we will support you to navigate your way to financial success. Thank you for listening and see you next time.